Well, we are paying more for everything, and new data backs that up. Yesterday, the U.S. Labor Department revealed consumer prices have increased 7 percent in the last 12 months alone. That is the biggest inflation rate in nearly 40 years. So right now, we're going back to school to better understand the inflation rate and how it's just hitting all of our bank accounts. James Galbraith is an economist and a professor at UT's LBJ School of Public Affairs. Good morning and welcome to you, James. Good morning and good to be with you. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So economists and financial experts have been pre predicting that inflation, we would be dealing with that. So that's not a surprise, right? Months ago, they told us that. What may be a surprise for many is the combination of inflation, supply chain issues, and the labor shortage. It's a triple whammy. What's your reaction, James, when you heard about well, that? Well, they're, they're all part of the same thing. And the underlying source of it is, of course, the pandemic. Um, what happened with the with the prices with the, with the price index really goes back to uh, the early part of the pandemic when oil prices dropped to twenty dollars a barrel. They're now eighty dollars a barrel, so there's been a huge increase. About it's actually been about fifty percent in the last year alone. That drives up the index, and then. There were supply chain issues in the production of new cars because uh, semiconductors for the right kind of uh, semiconductors were in short supply. So it, it people turned and bought used cars and that index went up. Uh, and then there's uh, there are other things happening, which among other things is the real estate prices, which affect the cost of housing. And we see that around here. So all of those things add up, but the underlying source is the, is, is the pandemic and to some degree, the policy response. Uh, it is not the inflation that I knew back in the 70s and 80s when I was working on these uh, issues in the government. Uh, it's not the inflation uh, of it's not it's not the inflation of other places and other times. It's very specific to our situation. Speaking of inflation, 7 percent, that's unusually high. So can you please explain? Uh, we keep hearing experts say that inflation is the biggest threat to our economy. Can you please expand on that? Well, there's a lot of uh, worry about this anxiety, but I think the reality is that when it, th these numbers are over a full year, uh, which means that the d December number was, sh was just published, goes back to December of 2021. And the big spikes were in the spring of 2021. Uh, and when we get through to the spring of 2022, they'll drop, they'll disappear from the data. And what will remain were the increases in wages in the three, maybe 4% range. Uh, the numbers will begin to come down. In fact, they're already coming down. If you've been out buying gas lately, the, the price of regular uh, is sometimes as low as about 270. It was $3 a few months ago. So those numbers are already coming down and that will, that will begin to stabilize the overall inflation index. We, we also hear, James, about the federal government increasing the uh, federal interest rate to combat inflation. Can you tell us how that works? It doesn't. It is the worst possible solution. <laughs> it is it is uh, taking it out on people who have student debts or health care debts or consumer debts or car debts. It's taking it out ultimately on businesses which have business loans. It will cost people their jobs. Uh, it is the way that uh, was adopted in the 1980s. It produced tremendous recessions. Then if it's if, if that's what the Fed is going to do, we're going to be in for a very rough ride next year. I, I'm doing my best to uh, pound the drums on this in the hopes that my small voice will reach them uh, and that they might not do this uh, because I, I, I think they, uh, the results are going to be very bad if that's the course. The way to handle this is, first of all, a little bit of patience because we know some of the elements are, are transitory. And secondly, you should target things that are that are specifically problematic, uh, and including uh, the gas, gas prices, which in fact had been targeted. They were selling oil from the strategic reserve. That's what's bringing down that price. Uh, used car prices will, be, will resolve once the, once the supply chain issues resolve. And so, I mean, there is some of that too. The, the fact that the supply chains are disrupted gives a chance for people to profiteer. You want to target that and, and, and bring it under control and get the system back to, to functioning smoothly. And then the inflation will, will be yesterday's news. So when do you see things going back to normal, James? I, I read somewhere maybe November of this year. Well, I think you'll see some improvement when the when these uh, price jumps from last spring uh, drop out of the data, which happens after 12 months. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's that's very predictable. That's a year away. Okay. March, April, May. 
that these things happen, when we get the numbers for May, June of 2022, they won't be in the numbers anymore. That I, I can assure you as a matter of arithmetic is the case. So uh, so some of this will, will begin to fade at that point. Now there's some, there's, there, there are things that will continue, uh, some things that should continue. They, uh, there, there's a, there, there is a, some pressure for wages to rise. This is a good thing. Lots of people were being underpaid. They're not that anxious to go back to jobs that are lousy jobs. And then so to get them back, you have to pay them a little bit more. This is a good thing. This will help rebalance the economy and help strengthen the middle class. If it shows up in the price index, well, we'll just live with that. Okay, so James, we should be cautiously optimistic. You said June, July, maybe things can look a little bit better by then. With good management, without the if the Fed keeps its powder dry, I would be cautiously optimistic. But I would also be prepared to intervene on specific questions when that's ne- when that's necessary. And those will, meat prices are an interesting example where that may well be necessary. But you need to have sort of a, you know what my old uh, boss Henry Royce, as a congressman I worked for many years ago, said: a rifle shot approach, not a blunderbuss approach. <laughs> Something that's specific to the case. James Galbraith, economist, professor at UT's LBJ School of Public Affairs. Thank you for the discussion and for your time this morning. Thank you very much.